Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this video I'm going to show you a few tips to improve your real estate photography. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramli, I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the romantic, the incredible city of Paris, France. But I'm here in Los Angeles, California, in this amazing $10 million house. Now I know it's a little crazy, I know as a real estate agent or as a photographer you don't always have to shoot a $10 million house, but what works for a $10 million house works for a $500,000 house. Same idea. This is really just an introduction to shooting in real estate. There's a few tricks that will drastically improve your photography. First of all, let's talk about gear. What you need is a good DSLR. You know, it could be a, an entry DSLR or Canon. I'm gonna shoot with a very advanced camera. That doesn't matter. Uh, you know, any good camera works. You need a wide angle lens and you need a tripod. That's really all you need to get great real estate photography. It's kind of hard to do anything else without that. But you can shoot with a Canon T2i or with a Nikon D7000, which are entry price DSLR, and they have wide angle lenses that you can purchase. In fact, you can look, there's a description under this video where I'll give you a link and suggest you different gears based on your budget. So. Once you have that, the first thing, if possible, is try to shoot raw, because by shooting raw, you will get a lot more, especially here today, we have a very uh, you know, bright outside, very dark inside, it's gonna be rough to shoot in JPEG. By shooting raw, you get more in the shadows and you get more in the highlights, okay? And the next thing is, I always like to work on a tripod, because it just gives cleaner images, and you can shoot at 100 ISO. Usually my settings is always the same, 100 ISO. Now you have to understand what 100 ISO means. It means that you're using um, the sensitivity of the sensor as it's supposed to be. Okay, you're not, you're not adding noise by making your sensor more sensitive than it needs to be. 100 ISO, F7, that's your aperture. Uh, most lens go to F7, you know, just try with that. And then we're gonna play around with the speed as you will see in a minute to get the right exposure. All right. Come and follow me and let's take a, a few photos. We're gonna start off by doing some photos in the afternoon when the light is really harsh, because sometimes you cannot stay by night. But if you're shooting a $10 million house, you wanna come when the night is a little dark outside, so you have a balance of the light outside and the light inside. And then we are gonna play around and do some night photos. But let's get going and let's start the first photo. All right, so you see here, I'm at 100 ISO and I'm at f7.1 and 1 25th of a second. So the only thing I have to play around is the speed. I like to shoot manual because I know what I'm doing when I'm doing that. And I like, I like to underexpose my photo and then I will re-expose them locally in processing. But if you're in a rush, you know, just look at it and you know, decide when it's good looking. So that's the first thing is you want to shoot row to make sure you get as much information. Right now it's the wrong time to shoot because let me take a, a shot. What's happening is that it's, uh, you know, it's still very bright outside. And I wanna wait for the light to come lower. Also, when you are very wide, and I'm very wide right now, I'm at 12 millimeter, you need to make sure you're super straight. And usually, the only reference that I use is the, is the walls themselves. Check this out. If I start tilting down my camera, or tilting up my camera, you see what's happening? You wanna make sure that this is straight, okay? That's, that's the fir first rule. And it's not easy, but that's kind of about right. Okay, this, the other rule that I wanna show you, the other trick is, you wanna do what I call police border. You wanna look at all around your photo, making sure nothing is half in or half out. Let me give you an example. If I zoom in now, okay, like this, you see that painting on the right, it's cut in half. That's not very nice. So that's why I kind of zoom out because I wanted to get the window in full and I want to get the painting in full. Okay, but you don't have to go so crazy, you know, with such a wide lens. You can go, you know, most photography are taken like at 24, but then you have to find like a cool framing at 24. So let's see what can we find at 24. Let's take another shot. All right. So I'm going to back out. And one thing is you always better backing out and zooming in than just zooming out because it's going to give you less distortion. So that's kind of cool. Right now I'm zoomed in at 24, which is the max I can on this lens, a very wide lens, but I like it. So I'm going to take a shot. I still think it's too early, but you know, if I was a real estate agent in a hurry, you know, I have no choice. I'll take that shot rather than just leave and have to wait for the right hour. Okay. So let's take a couple of more shots 
you know, a, with this light, but let's wait a little bit and see if we can get a, a better light later on. One thing I have is because of the police border, I always make sure when there is like a nice floor like this to go low. Because if I would be higher up like this on my tripod, you see, I would cut this whole beautiful furniture. By going down, you know, I make sure that I don't have anything. Remember, police border, you want to make sure everything is really straight like this. And it, it's hard because I'm really wide angle. And um, something like this. Voila. And then, uh, yeah, and that you give enough space, you know. I'm going to take this shot, but you see how it's, uh, the sun is coming down. It's too early. You know, it's still too bright outside. But uh, anyway, I'm taking the shot. And uh, let's see if we can find another angle that I like on this room. Okay, this is a, another angle that I really like. You know, I'm at 24 millimeter. You see, I've got just enough space around the carpet. Well, the carpet is not really straight, but that's fine. And then I'm going to take this shot. So remember, you know, shoot row, be very straight at 100 ISO f.7. And then you just play with the speed to make your photo brighter or darker. You know, I like it maybe like this, not too bright, not too dark. Autofocus, don't worry about that. And just make sure uh, you don't have anything in the border of the photo and take the shot. It's getting dark and what I did is, uh, you know, I, I went down and I, I zoomed, you know, instead of having everything white like this, I was zoomed in because I want to make sure here on the right side, we only see black. We don't see something like this, but like this. So we only have a window always very straight. I'm going to take that shot. It's still a, a little early. Let's see if I can find another framing. All right, I'm back in the studio and that's the result that I got. That was one of the, the photos I liked the most from this photo shoot. So once you've taken photo in row, I just want to show you two options that you have to make the best out of it. Um, so the first one is a software called Lightroom. Now, I'm not going to go into all the options that Lightroom does because it does a lot. And I'm just going to show you a, a few before and afters. And I'm actually going to put a link on a on a video where you can learn Lightroom in one hour. It, it's a free video, it's in a description, it's a YouTube video, you can just watch it, where I try to show you the entire software in an hour. So that's one of the before and after. Remember, I was shooting really dark, so that's one of the results that I got uh, from the early afternoon. But you see how everything is blown out? I mean, it's a nice photo, don't get me wrong, but I think we can do better. So I did that, you know, I did, that's the other one that's retouched, that's the before raw file, not retouched, that's the after raw file retouch. And then the night started to get darker. So that's one of the before of the darker. And that's one of the after. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So in Lightroom, basically, again, this is going to be a really quick overview. Now, Lightroom is a software that goes with Photoshop and costs $10 per month. If you want to subscribe to this, I think it's totally worth it. If you use it, you know, every once, you know, at least two, three, four times per month, because for the price of two coffee, you're going to get... Uh, you know, Lightroom and Photoshop. All you have to do is the link is below the video. Go to my gear page. You can subscribe here. Now, if you don't like subscription, I'll show you uh, an alternative which has some plus and minus called Luminar, which can do almost the same thing. So uh, here I am. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the shadows because remember it was really dark. I'm going to bring down the highlights so we can see what's going on outside. And I'm going to do what I call my black point. The, the, the idea of the black point is that it takes anything which is really dark and makes it darker. If I hold on the option key, I can see that. Uh, all you see here is this little green, the red, yellow is points which are 100% black. So I like that. And I'm going to do something holding the, the option key. I'm going to go the other way. And what you see here in blue is uh, dots which are 100% white. I don't, so right off the bat it's pretty good i'm gonna maybe add a bit of contrast but i don't like the you know that the the ceiling is very yellow that's that's one of the problems you get when you get different white balance so first of all i'm gonna add and that's a good thing about shooting rows i can change my white balance completely as i want i'm gonna make it maybe a little more blue and add a bit of magenta because i'm crazy about magenta and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna crop the photo because uh, i want less sky let's uh, not sky sorry let's see ceiling and then, and that's another powerful tool you have in Lightroom that I love. I'm going to take this tool here, which is a gradient. I'm going to click one time, drag my mouse. Another time, I'm going to go here, go to Exposure, 
and I'm just going to boost the exposure just of the seating and I'm going to take some saturation of the seating. So by doing that, I'm making it whiter and brighter. You can see here by clicking this little thing, you can see the before and after. And again, if I'm going too fast, check out the free video uh, that's going to show you how to use Lightroom in an hour. It's totally free. Uh, check it out. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, the only other thing I think I want to do with this photo is add a bit more sun. So I'm going to use a little uh, gradient here. I'm going to make a little gradient. I'm going to inv invert it. I'm going to feather it. I'm going to go here and choose uh, temperature. And what that's going to do is whatever is, is in this circle, again, I'm going a little fast. You know, I'm adding a bit of yellow and magenta and it's only going to appear in this circle here and maybe a bit of saturation. I'm just trying to add back some of that sun that was there that kind of went away because of the uh, dynamic range. But it was truly there. Okay, something like that. And uh, and voila. So that's, I would probably spend a bit more time, you know, clean up this in Photoshop here and there. Uh, Photoshop is great to erase elements or to change skies. Again, uh, you can check out this video that's going to show you how to use Photoshop uh, in about 20, 25 minutes. So first option is Lightroom and Photoshop, $12 per month. I love it, or 10 or $12, depends which country you're in. Uh, the other option is called Luminar. Still on my gear page, you can just go a little down and click here and make sure you use this link. It helps support this channel. And Luminar is a standalone software that costs $69. Okay, and I'm going to show you in action Luminar. So I'm going to launch Luminar. And uh, I'm going to click open image. I'm going to take the same image that we were doing and I'll show you, uh, you know, how easy it is. Now, the pros of Lightroom is that, I, I forgot to tell you this, that's very important, is that Lightroom has a catalog function. Meaning, yeah, let me show this to you so you can see the big difference between Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, I handled, I, I organized my entire library of photos in Lightroom. You see, if I go to Lightroom into my library module, I got... 177,000 photos, okay, all organized. So, you know, and I I can go here and press, for example, Camon F and type FL Tower, and I'm gonna get all the photos of the FL Tower within 14 years. I mean, there's many options. Check out my free video. There's a lot of things that Lightroom does that Luminar doesn't do. However, there are things that Luminar does that Lightroom doesn't do. Uh, for example, it's got a whole bunch of, of, uh, of cool filters. So when you come into Luminar, you got different workflow space here. I'm going to clear the workspace. You might find the uh, interface like this. Uh, choose the professional workspace. And you got the same things we did in Lightroom. It's, it's a raw developer. It's there to get the best out of your raw file. I'm going to open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. I'm going to do my blacks. And I'm going to do my white like I did in, you know, in, in Lightroom, but it's got a few more options. It's got this AI filter uh, where you just use it a little bit and it just makes uh, the photo pop even more. It's usually really cool. They got like advanced contrast. I really like, check this out. That's gonna make my sun come better. They have, you know, mid-tones. And, uh, you know, basically it's pretty good. So that's basically Luminar. Uh, okay, I, I, I want to crop the, uh, like I did here uh, in Lightroom. So I want to crop the seating. You can crop, of course, in Luminar. And I want to make the seating brighter like I did this. So for that, you have to add a filter which is not there called uh, the adjustable gradient. And the adjustable gradient, basically I can boost the exposure and I can lower the vibrance, which is the saturation. And I can click on set orientation. It's the same thing that I did in Lightroom. Okay, the same idea. I I'm just making this sky, uh, this ceiling a little brighter and uh, less saturated. So, voila. S same idea, same software. It's one time $69. Uh, what I don't like about Luminar is that it's slower than Lightroom in some functions. I don't like, for example, the adjustable gradient. I think the, the local tools are much better in Lightroom. Uh, but what I love is that it's got really, uh, there's some really cool feature. Like, for example, if I wanted, I could add like sun rays into this a house, uh, you know, it's got like all, all kind of crazy filter. Again, you got to shoot, check out my video. And this is way too much. Like I'm going to lower the penetration uh, and put it behind there. You know, it auto mask and it, you can make like really cool sun rays. Anyways, stuff like that, you know, you would have to check. Uh, it does a lot of things. Again, check out my video on Luminar. But voila, that's the basic idea. Shoot row, find a row developer that you like, either Lightroom or Luminar 
and have fun. Make sure you you, you, know, you use the tips I've given you to shoot on a tripod, making sure your photo is very straight, kind of underexpose your photo, and have fun. And I hope these tips is going to take you... Before we go, I just want to show you a few of the photos that I took from this shot. There was this one, this photo that I really like, this one of the pool, and I even took a drone shot of the photo at night. Voila! I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it uh, one thumbs up, a little like, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. Mesdames et messieurs, I will see you in another video. Au revoir!